Welcome to Conversate, our podcast where we engage in conversation. On this week's episode, I, Aaron Gerke, and Kevin Bender are engaging in conversation uh, about some hard questions. Uh, question of why. <laughs> why? Why are things the way that they are? And in particular, uh, why do we suffer? Why is this a reality? Uh, we're going to try to answer some of these questions by um, you know, ultimately pointing to Jesus talking about some of our own struggles and difficulties and how we've seen Jesus at work and all of that, and ultimately uh, pointing to the reality of the resurrection and the restoration of all things. We pray that this conversation is a blessing to you, and we really hope you enjoy it. Hey, Kevin. Hello, Aaron. Good day to you. Yeah, likewise, (laughs) brethren. (laughs) Yes. Oh, uh, well, here we are again with our awkward greetings. How's that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, awkward welcome to you all, listeners. <laughs> Brethren and sisterhood. That's right. Uh, or something of this sort. Uh, so what have you been up to? Uh, what have you been up to the last few days, Kevin? Last any, uh, few days? Hmm. Any big highlights for you? Uh, n- not that I can, that's coming to mind, other than like, I've really been appreciating the uh, color change outside. Oh, uh, yeah. It's like peak right now, I think. Yeah, I, I, I'm so bold to say. Yeah, you know? you've been going on getting out, uh, getting out, getting out to enjoy it or see the sights. Not like intentionally just to see the change, but like when I am out and about. Yeah, we went to McLean's uh, the list 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 past weekend okay. and uh, kind of caught some evening late afternoon time over there. And yeah, just the views across the canal, especially yeah. you know, like when you get the water view, yeah. but then also the hills with yeah, all the color yeah. yeah super pretty last fall because this is your second fall here. yeah did you guys did you ever drive up um brockway mountain during during fall colors at all so uh yes but uh on a day we, we went up to copper harbor a uh, camped or uh, stayed at like a cabin kind of thing okay. and then <clears throat> we were going to drive brockway on the way back and we did but it was like crazy foggy and uh, like super rainy okay uh, so we couldn't see like anything yeah uh so yeah, but we've been on Brockway, but yeah, never, never to really enjoy like the colors. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if you get the chance, good spot. Yeah, before before it all blows down. Yeah, I mean, you just see like mm. it's just every color, you know, like it's yeah. just beautiful. So mesmerizing. Yeah, it's a mm. great place that we get to call home. You know. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, this morning I was uh, I was crossing the crossing the lift bridge, and this this time of the year, like the the fog is always so thick. Yeah. Um, and where where I live in Hancock, we're we're kind of up up on the hill. So uh, so I got my house. It's it's light, and then I drive down, and I drive down into, into the, the mist. into the fog, <laughs> and then and then you come back to church, and you like drive up out of it, but you just see that you know that like wall of fog along the water, and then as that lifts though, and those colors pop through. I don't know. It's, it's beautiful. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I wasn't intending on making this transition, but uh, I'll mm-hmm. I'll just go straight for the transition do it you know but you you talked in your sermon on on sunday about suffering too and uh mm-hmm. when i'm talking about like that fog lifting and seeing the beautiful colors oh yeah i was just thinking about uh jesus jesus words in john 16 uh where he's talking to his disciples uh and he and he says uh you will have you will have sorrow uh but your your sorrow will turn into joy so uh-huh. he's prepping them for his death but then ultimately his resurrection you know and so mm-hmm. it's almost like that uh, like that, that, you know, there's that fog, <laughs> you know, everything's dark and dreary, but right, right through that fog is, is beauty and, and is light and all that kind of stuff. Um, I remember, uh, early on in my ministry here, uh, I was part of the, uh, the PALS program, like, like you're part of, that's the, yeah. Um, uh, stands for, what is it? Post, post seminary applied learning and support. That's right. Yes. PALS. So it's like for, for three years, for your first three years being a pastor and you can, uh, you work with the other pastors like regionally and a facilitator just to support and encourage one another in those years of ministry. And uh, we, have, we have a mutual friend, a, a former professor uh, from the seminary, Dr. Dr. Bruce Hartung. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's a counselor uh, guy, and I know that you know him and I know him and stuff. And he came to one of the retreats that we had. And I, I remember him asking this question because we were like going around and just processing like how are things going, you know? And uh, I remember... I was having a great time here in ministry mm. and you know, things were going pretty good and I was just telling about the highlights and he goes, oh, that's good, Aaron. But are there any clouds 
tell me about the clouds. And I was like, <laughs> it was like this, I don't know, you, you, you know. I mean, like this right, he would have raised his furrowed brow, yeah. you know, after asking. Tell me about your clouds. And I was like, <laughs> the clouds? He's like, yeah. Well, it's not going all that well, you know? And I'm like, I don't want to talk about that, you know? <laughs> like, but it's like that, all right, there, there are those, there mm. are those cloudy days, you know? And yeah. so I've thought about this a lot, you know, like just j like for real, like fog or in nature, you know, on the days that are cloudy or dreary or mm -hmm. whatever, like the sun is still shining. Sure. Yeah. It's still there, still yep. present. Just exact, it's in the exact same spot as it would be. It's just, there's some clouds, you know, like that is our reality and our walk with, with Jesus too. Like, right. He's always the same and his, the sun literally is shining on us. Yeah. Know? He is the light. Yeah. 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 A, lot of, well, a lot of images there. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, even the, the image of like a silver lining, yeah. you know, I mean, we use that phrase a lot and I think sometimes without even recalling really the imagery of it, you know, like, oh, what's the silver lining in this, you know, but like literally a silver lining is that cloud uh -huh. covering up the sun, you know, so it's dark, it's gray, okay. but then the outside of the cloud, you can see that little like glimpse of glimmer of light, right? Uh -huh. That's kind of. Yeah. Circling the cloud. Yeah. Is that what the, where the phrase comes from? The yeah, silver lining? that is a silver lining, literally. So it's I like I did not know that. Yeah, so it's acknowledging <laughs> that the light is still shining behind the behind the cloud, behind the gloom. Especially yeah. if it's a dark cloud, that's when you get really beautiful silver linings. Is when you have that like you know like that real gray kind of cloud, yeah. but then that you see just that glimmer of of sun kind of etching the outsides of it. What's interesting too, even some of the like the best sunsets that we have here mm -hmm. actually are not the ones where where there's a where it's a crystal clear sky. Yeah, the, you want the, tons of clouds in the sky, right? Yeah, the most beautiful ones are those. Uh huh. Because then they get kind of like painted with yeah. the purples and pinks and yeah, all that. That's interesting. Yeah, we did get some of those in Copper Harbor. That was great. Yeah. Brockway is a bust, but <laughs> sunsets were awesome. Yeah. Do Do you think that's Do you think the trees feel like they're suffering when they lose their leaves? Does that hurt for a tree? I don't know. Uh, I was just with a friend of ours, um, and. Uh, well, a member from our church who's just going through a real tough time, and uh, I read uh, I read Romans sixteen, um, where it talked about uh, Apostle Paul talks about uh, the creation groans mm -hmm. uh, since, since basically since the fall into sin, all creation yeah. groans with eager uh, kind of expectation for essentially what Paul is talking about is the resurrection and the restoration yeah. of, of of the new creation. Um, and I wonder, you know, Yeah. I wonder if that's, it looks kind of painful, you know? Yeah. Well, just that, especially like, you know, you see the leaves kind of just barely hanging on and there's like, you can, you can pull them off real easy, but yeah. they're still kind of like that. It's like the tree doesn't want to let go, uh, you know, and then it yeah. snaps. Yeah. I feel like there's so many things in life that's like, we, we also don't want to let go of them, you yeah. know? Um, but a lot of times life forces us to, mm. you know, one way or another, whether it's letting go of. Um, you know, our health in some ways or letting go of control we had at one point. I was with a friend of ours as well uh, earlier today who uh, just was um, struggling with that loss of freedom because uh, she can't drive anymore. Mm. And, uh, and that was a really hard thing, you know, yeah. a suffering really yeah. in its own right, you know. So, uh, um, yeah, you know, and then, and then obviously fall turns to winter. And so, I mean, we are kind of in this like season. I always, like, especially college I think but like this time of year makes really would make me more like thoughtful it seems like okay you know because it's like things are changing and then also like literally di I don't know do they die I never understood this in science did the trees actually die no okay they're still they're like alive. dormant yeah yeah dormant dormant they look kind of dead though yeah I mean everything looks pretty dead yeah I mean it's really like pretty miraculous to think about like that yeah. every year we get to see this I mean resurrection of a sort yeah you know in yeah. nature yeah um, but uh, but yeah so uh, all very convoluted way of saying, <laughs> I hear you, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Suffering. Well, I mean, you, so in your, in your sermon on Sunday, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, <laughs> you, you brought up two huge things that resonate with everybody. Uh, one, the question why, mm. but then you coupled that with why, why is there suffering? You know, I mean, you mm. could take yeah. either, either one of those and just, those are those are, I mean, you use the word haunting, and they, I never thought of it that way. And when you said it at first, I was like haunting, but I was like, well, I suppose, like if you dwell on it, right? If you dwell on it and yeah. and don't have, 
and don't have the answer, just your, like my default answer as, as a human is, well, God's got it. You know, there's a resurrection mm -hmm. story. Like I'm very personally comfortable and confident um, in that hope, Okay. you know? And yeah. so I like, that's just, that's my, my default. I just, I go there. Yeah. May, not perfectly all the time, but like I've tried to train myself to just, yeah, I just live in hope, you know. Uh -huh, um, uh -huh. And the and I, I've tried to learn to recognize that it is the, the sufferings that actually, like Paul says, that produce uh, an alignment with Christ and His suffering for us. And right. tried to put myself in that, um, in that in that story. But, um, but yeah, I mean, if you don't, if it. If you don't align yourself with Christ and God's plan and the hope that we have, oh man, yeah, why and suffering like, whew, that yeah. that's haunting. That is, it really is because it's so unanswerable. Exactly, it's so painful. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, I think that's you, you, talking about training yourself. You know, in this kind of way of of moving forward when stuff happens. You know, yeah. when you when maybe the uh, the. the natural response would be kind of to question why you know but it, i feel like there you do have to train yourself you know to to trust in kind of what god has promised and that he is he is in control right like i don't understand this right now but he does because really there's no other like you're never going to have an answer probably uh that's very um you know comforting as to why you know mm -hmm. something happens that is really hard for you even over time if you um you know come to appreciate maybe the growth that took place because of the suffering, like it still doesn't quite wash out the whole like, but did I have to, you know? I know, I know. God, couldn't you just like Zap taught, me. taught me that lesson? Like, <laughs> couldn't yeah. I have sat in a classroom yeah. and you explained to me, you right. know, how much you love me? Like, why did I have to go through the, the school of hard knocks? Of it? Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, and so, you know, uh, without without leaning into God's control over things, I think you're either gonna be haunted by it, because I mean, you'll be kind of searching for an answer that you're not really gonna get, or uh, you. I think another move is to just shut it down completely. You know, it's like, I'm not even gonna acknowledge that this horrible thing happened, mm -hmm. or, you know, I'm gonna kind of like medicate myself in some way, or numb out in some way, you know, and kind of just avoid mm -hmm. this you know, thing that has happened in my life that was really damaging and difficult, but I, just, I, don't, I, I don't want to deal with it, you know, yeah, I don't want to think yeah. about it, I don't yeah. want to face it. Um, but God, I think, in Jesus, gives us a much different way where we don't need to be haunted by it, you know, mm. kind of constantly looking at it, mm. nor do we need to ignore it completely and try and live as if it never happened, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but in Jesus, we kind of have this third path, this middle road that says, "No, let's like look to me, look mm. look to look to me for your for your comfort, for your even with your questions, bring them to me, um, and uh, and let me show you like how I am with you." You yeah. know, yeah. Uh, it's not you know it's not quite the answer I think we're looking for a lot of times when we ask why, yeah. and that's kind of in the sermon I I, <clears throat> I said something to the effect of like you know he answers the question with another question. Yeah. You know, it's not. He doesn't really answer why, um, but he does make a promise, which is what, you know, uh -huh. what am I going to do with this? What yeah. am I going to do with this? And because uh, Paul, I think it might be in that same area of the whole groaning, right? Mm -hmm. uh, where we get his words about God working everything for good. Oh, uh, that's a different uh, part in Romans, yeah. Okay. But, yeah. But, yeah. It's, uh, it's interesting. I mean, when you, uh, <laughs> you you started in your sermon about like your, your daughter Lily and mm. um, like, you're asking the questions why like why are you so adamant about your stuffed animals having to be arranged in a certain way and um and you said like she, I, I hear she's gonna flip that and start asking me the, the this question uh, uh -huh. she will she will actually my i don't know that it'll be right at three maybe she'll start asking the questions but uh, if, there, if she's anything like my kids it'll just keep getting exacerbated and they'll just do it just to <laughs> just for fun so especially my son max right now who's uh seven he he loves the he loves the question, um, and and he he just does it just to see how how many whys he can ask me in a row basically sure. you know, um, so it it always just ends up at because God is God and mm -hmm. and we're not you know like mm -hmm. eventually mm -hmm. like that's my final answer yeah honestly yeah like I mean take any take any question you know um, I'll I'll give it's usually like three or four three or four 
things and then and then it's an unanswerable and then I just I just go to buddy it's because God is God and we're not yeah he's like but why is God God you know and I'm like because he is kid he is. Yeah. <laughs> give, give it a rest <laughs> <laughs> What's well, funny? I mean, even uh, this would have been—it might have been a year ago. But I, I do with the chapel here with the kids. Yeah. I wanted to talk about the colors changing outside. Okay. The colors are changing. It's like, oh, this could be a neat illustration. But I honestly was like, I don't really know what's going on. You know, like, why is this happening? You know, you're like, the trees are dying outside. The kids are like, no, they're going dormant. You're like, oh, right. <laughs> oh, really? I was like, why? <laughs> uh, but no, I so I looked it up. You know, and it's. Uh, it has something to do with, uh, what's it, the chlorophyll? I mean, that's like, I think, the green agent in uh, plants. And uh, the sun produces it. Photosynthesis, is that? That's a word <laughs> uh, that's in there somewhere. But yeah, so I mean, like, I learned the whole scientific process for why the leaves change. Yeah. But it didn't really answer why. Yeah. You know what I mean? It put words to the process that's yeah. happening. But it doesn't, ultimately, like Max is getting at, you know, like, we... Even in the scientific world, you end up running into these like, well. I'm, I'm, honestly, I, I had a buddy um, who was, a, he was getting his PhD in forestry mm. locally. And I, I was asking him some of those questions. Like, how, did the, how do the leaves like know when to do that and change on stuff? And I mean, yeah. in generalities, he could answer like, well, it's you know, based on the like temperature and you know sunlight and all that kind of stuff but still like mm, mm-hmm. uh, there were, there were a lot of unanswerables you know uh-huh. and it was kind of it was it was uh, interesting cuz he was a non-christian friend of mine you know and like yeah just i don't know so we had some good conversations about the about those trees you know but i i don't know i don't know what the, the unknown i don't know one of you probably knows all the answers if you know the answers about why the you know the leaves change color and how they know to do it. Yeah, you know, you let us know. So now that you're bringing, I think it is has to do because the sun is now tilting, so we're getting less sun every day. The earth is tilting, not the sun. Oh, man, <sighs> why? <laughs> 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 yeah. So yeah, yeah. So so suffering in our suffering, we have questions. Those questions don't get answered. Um, but yet, God's doing something in our sufferings. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you have any, like, it's kind of a sensitive topic, you know, like in general, but like, do you have any, like, things from your life you're like, actually, in the sacristy after worship, mm-hmm. uh, one of our elders said, mm-hmm. you know, it, it is hard in the moment, you know, to figure out even what's going on or how is this even going to be used for anything. But then he said, but when I look back 20 years ago to something in my life, yeah. you know, he's like, and then I can kind of trace out, hell, here are some things that resulted from this, you know? Yeah. I mean, I... It's... Sometimes it's easier to point to things in other people's lives than my, than my own life, but... Sure. It's like John uh, 9, disciples. Yeah. You know, man born blind. <laughs> one of them. Yeah. But, I mean, I know in generalities the things that were the, the hardest on me um, and some of those things are actually because of like working with other people, like going through really hard things. Sure. Um, were the things that produced like the greatest amount of, of growth in me and even more than that, not just growth in me, but uh, a deeper dependence on God, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And that's, mm-hmm. I think that's what I look back on is, is like, it's in the, in the moments of my greatest weakness and frailty as a result of the suffering and brokenness of this world mm. that I throw my hands up and you know admit my total dependence on God sure and then God reveals himself as the God that we can depend on yeah and that produces a deeper level of faith and trust in him which produces a you know a growth of character and all that kind of stuff but um yeah so i that's always it's always an interesting question it's like so so should i pray for should i pray for suffering yeah so that i can you know grow <laughs> or like what and i don't i don't think so i i right. you can you can live a a good life a, a very blessed life a successful life 
and still have that absolute dependence mm. on God. I, I want to believe that. Maybe, I, I guess, but maybe, maybe not though. Maybe we have to have those times of like, there have to be these, uh, you know, instances where, where, we, where we admit like, mm. I am nothing without you, God. Like, I need, I need you. I need your presence. Um, you know, I mean, this, this, this story of Joseph, I mean, we haven't even mentioned his name yet, but, yeah, you know, yeah. like you were talking about, you were preaching on Joseph, and that's how we got to the suffering thing. The, the reality with Joseph, what we see recorded in the scriptures multiple times, is that the Lord was with Joseph. Right. Uh, Yahweh, actually, uh, in the Hebrew language, God himself, mm-hmm. right, is with Joseph in prison, in the pit. Mm. Um, God is with Joseph, God is with Joseph, God is with Joseph. Um, and then Joseph even admits that reality himself. Oh, right. I don't know if you know that, like... In the dreams? When, yeah, yeah, yeah. When, he's, uh, when he's speaking to Pharaoh, um, so he gets called up out of prison to go to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh's like, hey, I'm having this troublesome dream. What does it mean? And Joseph says, um, I can't. I can't interpret your dream for you. Only God can do that. Mm-hmm. I've, I feel that's Joseph finally coming to grips with I don't know how I'm here. I don't know how I'm alive, you yeah. know, except by God's grace. You know, he mm-hmm. starts as this, you know, braggadocious little brother <laughs> and, uh, you know, by forced humility, essentially comes to the place where he's standing before the king saying, yeah. pointing to the, to the one true king, you know, saying, right, I'm nothing, but he is, he is everything. Yeah. You know? And I, I think that's, that, that's where we got to find ourselves, you know, is, in that place of humility being, you know, lifted up by God. And I mean, the scriptures speak to this all the time. Oh, yeah. Right? Uh-huh. When I am weak, you are strong. Yep. The humble right. will be raised up. The lowly will be exalted. Right. That kind of a thing. Right. God God chooses the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. Right? I mean, yeah. it's just like, uh-huh. it's always this re- reversal, this great reversal. Right. You know? Even Jesus in the Beatitudes, right? You know, uh, blessed are those who mourn. Mm-hmm. You know, like his idea even of what it means to be, who is blessed. Yeah. You know, it looks a little different than, than how we think. Like, we never want to fall into the trap of thinking, oh, you know, like, God's with me only when life's good, yeah. you know, or okay, or, uh, you know, or I'm doing well, or, I'm be, or I am, be, you know, having success in yeah. my career or my relationships. I mean, <clears throat> I don't think it's wrong to say that God wants those things for us. You yeah. know, if God isn't, he's not like some sort of, you know, I don't know, sadist, yeah. or like he doesn't want us to inflict punishment yeah. on ourselves. That was kind of the ascetics, you know, back in the day. Yeah, but I, th- I think we are. I think we're, we're worse at acknowledging God's presence when things are good. Oh, you think so? I think so. I think when yeah, things. Yeah, I think are, I see what you mean. I think when things are going good, that's uh-huh. when we are tempted to to just be like, just to be apathetic to God's presence. Correct. To just yeah. be like, yeah. I mean, of course course god's present but uh-huh. i don't i mean i don't know that i really need him yeah right like you things know? are good yeah <laughs> yeah yes well and that's the very uh warning there in deuteronomy 6 uh with the whole uh you know the lord's god with all your whole heart soul and mind and said you know beware when you enter the land you know that i'm giving you yeah. lest you forget yeah. you know and it's after you list all these good things the promises you yeah. know um so yeah yeah so i I think you're right. I think there's a both and though. I think sometimes people, especially if they talk in the in the language of blessing, you know, yeah. uh, sometimes there can be like this association, or you know, another, not really in our tradition, not really, not at all in our tradition, but the whole prosperity gospel idea, yeah. which is, hey, if you obey God, uh, you know, if you follow His commands, you're gonna, you are like it's. Um, for sure formula like you're gonna have a better life yeah, yeah, yeah. you know uh, more success you know um and that's not god's not super formulaic uh-uh. you know yeah uh, but i hear what you're saying too sometimes it's easy when things are going well to kind of yeah lose sight of our our dependence mm-hmm. you know on god um yeah we're not as independent as we like to think yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um i i I, I do like the move that you made towards the end of your sermon um, where you where you did kind of you answered the question of why suffering by by pointing us to the um, uh, what is God what is God doing through that and maybe that's what you were just trying to ask me like you know have you ever had, had an experience like that but um, I, I think that's a that's certainly 
a, a good place to, to go. Um, we again, we still may not ever know that right full answer, but I think that's a that's an interesting way to look at it though too, um, just to to have a different instead of like a woe is me type um, attitude. Um, it's a that's an attitude of God. I, I, I believe that you are at work um, through this through this present suffering, mm-hmm. um, and I I try to remind people of that actually like. Um, even people like living in nursing homes or if you're in the hospital with some sort of issue, like um, God is present with you in those moments Mm -hmm. for your sake, but also for the sake of the people around you. Right, exactly. And uh, Paul talks like this in Philippians that like the kind of the way that we, the way that we suffer is actually... um, kind of one of the best witnesses mm. that we have to the world because everybody suffers yeah you know that is like that's a great equalizer everybody dies and everybody suffers mm-hmm. you know that's a it's just a part of the part of the sinful broken experience we have in this world so so the answer of how am I going to suffer um, is actually a great witness to who Jesus is so mm. if we suffer with hope and with peace pointing to the ultimate resurrection and restoration that we have yeah. through Jesus suffering and death um, that says something to the world you know mm-hmm. instead of just like complaining or moping or you know just kind of be hopeless yeah, yeah. Um, to live with hope and peace and joy through that by by you know living with Jesus that says it just it demonstrates something to the world, you know. So, mm-hmm. so I would encourage our listeners, like as you're going through difficulties, and, and those difficulties take you mm. places outside of your comfort zone, you know, whether that be like a nursing home or a, a hospital or to the scene of a tragedy or to the home of a friend dealing with a you know broken relationship or a lost job or whatever that is. Like the way that we enter into these moments of suffering. Um, can 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 be an incredible witness to to who Jesus is, you know, yeah. and and a lot of that isn't is also not even explaining. We don't have to explain away the problem, right? You know, but to bring Jesus into the midst of the problem, right? You know, and that's what I love about the resurrection. You know, God says, "Look, I you don't need to avoid, like I'm doing something about this suffering." Yeah, you know, and it's in the resurrection the fact that Jesus he dies. But then he rises again. Yeah. So I mean, like the loss still happened, the grief, the suffering that still happened. It didn't go away. Right. But it was also like reversed into yeah. into you know such a way that completely uh, overshadows yeah. uh, uh, the suffering that it took. Right. You know. And so the promise to us is anything you know that we ha- we end up giving up in this life. Uh-huh. You know, if that's like our form of suffering is we had to give up something, we're getting so much more. Yeah. In the resurrection, when Jesus comes back, yeah. you know, it's heaven is not some sort of weird consolation prize. Like you had a tough time on earth, but here, this is a nice place. Forget all that. Yeah. No, it's like it's going to undo. It's going to reverse. Yeah. I and mean, that's what it means to restore. It's not like the, you know, cruddy, busted up car just gets replaced by something else. Yeah. No, that same car yeah. takes on this new, beautiful life. It's restored. It's yeah. better, yeah. you know. Um, so that's kind of the promise that God has for us in, in the resurrection of Jesus, and right. uh, you know, obviously eternally. But even in our, even in this world, as we walk today, mm-hmm. you know, those kind of going back to a week before, but those broken relationships yeah. or these things that seem as good as dead, yeah. you know, the resurrection gives us the hope now yeah, yeah, to yeah. say, God can, He can restore this. Uh-huh. It might, it might not look like it yeah. in this moment, but He can, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and He will ultimately. Absolutely, awesome. Yeah. Well, so for those of you listening, we just you know want to say thank you as always uh, for for tuning in and for joining us uh, in this conversation, and we pray that it's a conversation that's a that's a blessing to you. We hope that um, maybe today's conversation about suffering and these hard questions of why is uh, hopefully it's helpful to you to maybe think about these things a little differently um, and to maybe give you a little bit of uh, insight into how to step into the suffering of other people in a, in a helpful way. And so uh, if you have any questions about that, please feel free to reach out to us. But as always, our encouragement is hopefully to take something that you heard today and start a faith conversation with somebody else um, in, in your own uh, realm and influence as well. So 
uh, keep it up. And uh, thanks for being with us today, Kevin. As always, it's good to be with you, bud. Likewise, brother.